If you're brand new to recording, producing, and mixing, and looking to set up your first home studio, this video is for you. In this video, I'm gonna go over how to set up a complete home studio on a super low budget with gear recommendations, what to buy, what not to buy, and all the general things you're going to need to start producing your own music in your own studio right now. So let's jump in. Hey yo, it's Alex from MetaMind Music and with this channel, it's my mission to help musicians produce themselves by developing their mindset, expanding their creativity, and connecting to their inner artist in a deeper way. So we've all seen it at the music stores, those fun toys, a new piece of gear, a new guitar pedal, a new musical instrument. Gear is super fun, but in reality, you don't need that much gear to get started to set up your own home studio. In today's day and age, it's much more important to focus on what not to get to fit your specific needs because we are constantly bombarded by the next new gadget, the next new device, the next new revolutionary piece of gear that's going to make you sound amazing. The truth is you don't need all the new shiny gadgets. And this is especially true if you're just getting started because there is so much information out there about what gear you need, people's opinions, and some of those opinions, to be quite frank, are absolutely insane. Some people will tell you that you have to invest in all sorts of expensive gear and complex equipment to have a setup to get a good sounding recording. And that's anything but true. The truth is in today's day and age, the technology has come so far that you can get a great sounding recording, you can mix your own songs, you can produce yourself for a very relatively low cost, and I'm gonna help guide you through that process of getting set up in this video. All right, so in this home studio setup video, we're gonna go over five main categories that you need to have covered to have a functioning home studio battle station so you can produce yourself in your home studio. So you can produce yourself in your pajamas. All right, number one, we're gonna start with your computer, which will be the central hub of your recording studio. Number two will be an audio interface and microphone to actually record sounds into your computer and to handle all of the analog to digital conversion. Number three, we're gonna talk about your digital audio workstation, so the software you use to produce music, virtual instruments, and plugins. Number four, we're gonna talk about headphones and studio monitors, so you can actually hear back what you're producing and use those reference monitors to get awesome sounding mixes. And then number five, we're gonna talk about MIDI controllers, so that you can actually control a lot of your virtual instruments and you can play music into your computer instead of relying on clicking in notes manually with your mouse. I've also got a special bonus at the end of this video, so stick around till the end. All right, so before we jump into the list, I wanna preface this whole video, this whole idea of investing in equipment to set up a home studio with this. I highly encourage you to start with what you have. You 100% don't need to invest in a new computer, in a fancy new microphone to get started. You can get started most likely with what you already have right now. And if you don't have the budget to start a studio right now, you can always level up your studio as you get better. But if you're just getting started, you might as well start with what you have until you get good enough, until you get better to then invest in better equipment when you're ready for that. So I just want to say that before we jump in. All right, so number one, you're going to need a computer. Okay, so I have this MacBook Air here that I used for quite a long while before upgrading to a Mac Pro. And before that, I had a MacBook Pro with eight gigabytes of RAM, and I used that for five years, and it never failed me once. And the only reason I upgraded was because I needed more RAM and a little bit more power to complete full mixes with a full band and freelancing some of my services. But most likely, you already have a computer. Okay, if you have a laptop kicking around your house, if you have a PC, if you have a desktop, whatever it is, use that computer to get started. You do not need to invest in a brand new computer for music production. The computer you already have is plenty powerful enough to get started. And if you don't have a computer yet, I highly suggest you just find an app on your phone, such as Noise by Roly or Oxy Pro or something, and just start making music. Start getting good at using that app, start getting good at developing musical ideas, and become the best at that app until you save up for a computer. So there's 
there's no excuse not to get started because you're watching this on something. So if you have a computer or a device, you can get started right now with what you have. All right, but if you're looking for recommendations, I would highly recommend an, at least an i5 processor on a computer with 16 gigs of RAM will give you more than enough for any project, for any mix going forward throughout your career. But again, just start with what you have. All right, number two is an audio interface and a microphone. So let's start with the audio interface. An audio interface is what's going to allow you to record external sounds. So whether it's your vocals through a microphone, whether it's an acoustic guitar, whether it's plugging in a synthesizer into the inputs, plugging in an electric guitar, a bass, whatever it is, it's gonna take that sound and bring it into your computer so then you can manipulate it, you can play with it, you can mix it later in the software. So this is a key piece of equipment to have in your home studio. And I have to say, I have to recommend this one if you're just getting started. This is the Focusrite 2i4, and I have had this for over 10 years. This interface has not failed me once in 10 years, all right? It's still working, I still use it to this day. I have another interface, but this one has been a workhorse. And there's a few things about this interface that are super powerful. First and foremost is that you have two inputs at the front that both handle microphones and direct lines from like an electric guitar or bass guitar or something. And you can switch between both. And the, the power of this is that you can actually record stereo sources. So for example, if you have a synthesizer and you wanna record the output of your synthesizer in stereo, you can take two outputs from that synth and go into the two out inputs in the front of this interface. Alternatively, you could do something fun like record your vocals with a microphone input in one of these and then your guitar directly into the other input input. A lot of flexibility having two inputs. Another thing you could potentially do is if you're recording a band or an instrument that requires multiple microphones, you could get a mixer and then feed all the audio inputs into that mixer and then take the stereo out of that mixer and feed it into the stereo in of your audio interface and then record it into your computer. Another great feature of this interface is that it has phantom power to power your condenser microphones, which I would highly suggest if you're recording vocals or acoustic guitars and you really wanna capture a high fidelity signal. It also has a feature called direct monitoring so that you can record yourself without latency, which is huge. That is a requirement to actually be able to vibe out and to perform properly is to have accurate monitoring with no delay. So that direct monitoring feature is a huge plus. We have this awesome huge silver knob. Oh, it's so fun to turn. And then we also have a separate headphone jack. So you can plug your headphones in directly here and you can control the volume of your headphones independently of the main out of your interface. And a bonus here is that there's this little switch on the front of this interface that changes the outputs from one to two to three to four. And what does this all mean? This means that you basically have two stereo outs with this interface. So for example, if I was working with a vocalist and recording their vocals in another room, I could have this big main knob controlling the outputs one and two, the stereo outs one and two to my monitors for my own mix. But then I could switch this little switch to three, four so that these headphones are sending out output three and four from the interface. And the vocalist could get a mix in their headphones of whatever they want, a completely separate mix of what they wanna hear from the project so that they can be comfortable recording vocals. So that is just an extra bonus from this interface. It's super cost effective. It's never failed me. I can't recommend it enough. And it's red. Also, what you're going to need to go along with your audio interface, if you plan on recording vocals, acoustic guitar, or any other acoustic instrument, you're going to need a microphone. And I would suggest that you get what is called a large diaphragm microphone. And basically all this means is it's a specific type of microphone that takes power. And that's what you're going to use the 48 volts on the audio interface for is to power those microphones. But these microphones are designed to pick up more detail in the high end frequencies. So it's great for vocals. It's great for acoustic guitar. It's great for miking up a piano or trying to capture some room ambience. I would highly recommend that you get a large diaphragm microphone if you're a vocalist or if you anticipate recording external audio quite a bit. So I'm not a stickler for 
microphones, I have this Kell Audio HM7U, which kind of emulates the Shure SM7B, which is a great microphone. If you can afford that, I would highly recommend you jump for it, especially if you're a vocalist or something. But it can be a little bit expensive, so I could also recommend this Kell Audio kind of imitator. I don't know if they still make these anymore, but the HM7U or the SM7B can be quite an investment, especially at the beginning. So alternatively, I would recommend the Samson C1 condenser microphone. It's super inexpensive and you do get a great high quality sound. It's actually one of those rare microphones that are relatively inexpensive, but give you quite a high quality sound. So I definitely recommend that one. Also, it can't hurt to have a dynamic microphone such as the Samson Q7 that I've had around the studio for years or like something like a Shure SM57 and that's more so for if you're doing more aggressive sounds like a guitar amp, a bass amp or if someone's just screaming their head off into a vocal mic then you might want something that can take a little bit more of a beating frequency wise. All right number three is having a Pokemon in your studio. Just kidding, that's totally optional, but it does make your music sound better. All jokes aside, number three is your digital audio workstation, your software, your plugins, and your virtual instruments, okay? This is what's going to allow you to record the external audio, record your guitar, record your vocal, and get it into your computer and start playing around with it, start moving it around, start changing the frequencies and everything to produce your song and to mix your song to then export it and share it with the world. It is the central hub of your whole studio is that DAW. And the great news in today's day and age is that there is so much choice of amazing free software that will help you get started and get professional sounding results right away. So sometimes when you invest in an audio interface like the one I recommended, it comes with free software. So the one I recommended, the Scarlett 2i4, comes both with Pro Tools First and Ableton Live Lite, which are two amazing pieces of software that can help you get started. They come with built-in sounds and you're off to the races. There are actually also a few other softwares such as Cakewalk, such as GarageBand and Reaper that are either free or super cost-effective that you can check out as well. Now let's talk about software instruments and plugins. What software instruments are are basically digital versions of grand pianos, of stringed instruments, of plucked sounds, of crazy synthesizers and crazy presets, all the sounds underneath the sun in digital form. Again, like today is the best time ever to get into making music because there is a plethora of free options of amazing sounding software instruments and amazing sounding plugin tools such as EQs, compressors, saturators, delays, reverb, verbs, all that good stuff completely for free. And I actually made a whole other video going over my top 10 free pieces of software, virtual instruments and plugins. So if you're interested in checking those out for free, check out that video in the card above. All right, so to sum up number three, you can basically get all of your software needs, your DAW, your software instruments, your plugins completely for free to get started. And it's going to sound amazing. All right. Number four is headphones and or studio monitors. And if you are on a budget, I would recommend to start out with headphones. And I'm not particular with my headphones. I've been using the same kind of Pioneer headphones for like 10 years and I've really learned them well. And that's the key is whatever type of headphone you get, it doesn't really matter what it is as long as it's fairly flat response and you get used to hearing how professional mixes, how your favorite music sounds like on those headphones and the better you learn them, the better you'll be able to do mixes and produce with them. So as I said, I'm not particular to headphones. I don't really care what kind of headphones I have as long as I can start to hear some of the music. I know what it sounds like and to hear how the frequency response is, then I'm happy. So you can start out with any entry level headphones from AKG, from Audio Technica, from Pioneer, and you will be well on your way. They are relatively cost effective and you will be hearing high quality audio from those headphones. Alternatively, if you're ready to level up your studio and get studio monitors, or if you don't really see yourself in enjoying wearing headphones every time you have to record or produce music, then you might want to consider investing in a couple of these bad boys. And the only caveat with getting studio monitors is that you have to account with the acoustic treatment 
of your room because the sound coming out of the speakers will bounce off the walls, will get trapped in the corners, will bounce off the ceiling and reflect themselves into your ears and it could really distort the frequency spectrum and the frequency image that you're getting from your speakers. So that's just an extra step that you have to take is that you might have to treat your room to make sure that there's no bombardment of frequencies going on and that you can clearly hear what's coming out of the speaker without it being colored or without it being maxed okay so that's a huge thing but if you're looking for a recommendation of monitors i would recommend the yamaha h5s which are the model slightly smaller than these ones these are the h8s that have a little bit more bass response but to get started those yamaha h5s they sound great they're reliable they're fairly flat response and it's a great way to get started but again if you don't have the budget for studio monitors you can't afford it just start with headphones and you're fine. You can get studio monitors down the road when you can afford it and when you're ready to treat your room and upgrade your studio. All right, and number five, which I personally think is a requirement for a home studio. I know some people think differently, but number five is a MIDI controller, such as a MIDI keyboard that breaks apart for some reason. So all jokes aside, you're probably going to want to get some sort of MIDI controller, some sort of maybe MIDI keyboard or drum pad to actually control the instruments inside of your software. Because if you don't have a keyboard to play the sounds, you're going to be stuck clicking in MIDI notes with your mouse or playing it on your computer keyboard, which let's be honest, that's lame. And the power of a MIDI keyboard is going to allow you to connect with those software instruments as a musician. It's going to allow you to vibe out. It's going to allow you to flow and it's going to allow you to play stuff and inject some humanness into your digital instruments. Another huge feature of having a MIDI keyboard is that you can start to learn some music theory. You can typically map out a lot of the knobs and a lot of the parameters to all sorts of crazy cool effects and design your own instruments and really expand your unique sound, expand your craft and discover new sounds and new ways to manipulate things in unforeseen ways and all in all having a midi controller will just make the whole experience so much more enjoyable so much more fun and it's going to make it a lot faster to get down ideas to work out chord progressions bass lines drum beats etc and i'm biased i love midi controllers i have a plethora of them here i have the push two i love being hands-on i love touching things i find it a lot more intuitive and a lot more creative than always being stuck with the mouse and the keyboard and keep in mind you do not not have to be a pianist you do not have to be an expert at playing piano to profit from having a MIDI keyboard I'm not a great pianist by any means but I do use it to work out ideas and to play the software instruments like I said in the DAW so even if you're just using it to find chords and to play around with your software instruments it is well worth the investment and if you're looking for a recommendation for a MIDI controller I would recommend the Akai MPK mini and it's basically a tiny MIDI controller that has, I think, two octaves of keys. It has eight pads to lay down drums or trigger samples and it has eight encoders that you can map to filters, to delays, to effect sense, to all sorts of things under the sun. So it has a lot of bang for your buck. And as a bonus, some MIDI controllers, most of them now, have what are called transport controls. All right, so the, the Akai MPK does have transport controls so does this one and what the transport controls allow you to do is to start playback stop playback start recording in your software without having to click it with the mouse so it just gives you a little bit extra control and this actually helps allow you detach yourself from the computer and start to connect more with the music so you can actually maybe play around with the software instrument and Start, start playback, record yourself all within your MIDI controller. All right, and the final step that I didn't want to make its own step, but it is important, is if you're just starting out, you're going to need a lot of miscellaneous random things to make the most out of all your studio equipment. So first and foremost, you're going to need cables. All right, so if you have a microphone and you have an audio interface, you're going to need what is called an XLR cable to connect your microphone to that audio interface. Similarly, if you have electric guitars or electric basses, you're going to need a quarter inch cable to go from your guitar into that audio interface to record it. Continuing with the microphone, you're most likely going to need a pop filter, okay, which looks like this black mesh screen. Uh, that goes in front of the microphone and this is for if you're recording vocals it's really going to help you dial back the plosives so the 
P's and the B's that really pop out when someone is speaking or singing. It's kind of a requirement, right? Because otherwise it's gonna sound amateur if you don't have a pop filter on. So definitely look into a pop filter. You're also probably going to need a mic stand to hold your microphone. So you can either get a microphone boom arm so you can actually set the microphone to record someone's vocal or an acoustic guitar and get the perfect positioning. Or you could get like a smaller mic stand that just fits on top of your desk, just that holds your microphone close if you just plan on doing vocal recording for yourself. And as I said in the beginning, gear is fun. It's fun to get new toys and new devices and like play around these new things but the, a lot of it is unnecessary to get started. So I've covered everything you need to be well on your way to be producing your own music in your home studio, no excuses. And before we end this video, I just wanna talk about working with your limitations. If you can only afford certain amount of things, if you have a limited budget to start your home studio, just get your computer and get the software and you can jump in there and start having fun and start playing around with music. You can start producing stuff, start getting ideas and working with the limitations you have. And inevitably, as you get better and better, you're going to be able to use the gear that you then invest into, into your studio at a higher level. And that's probably the best way to learn is to learn with what you have and learn what you have very well before investing in new stuff that you have to learn, right? Because if you work within your limitations, then when you invest in something else, you're going to be a lot more familiar with the process and you're probably gonna have a lot more skill in producing yourself once you get that new equipment. All that to say is you do not need fancy equipment to produce good quality music. You need to be able to produce good quality music to produce good quality music. Does that make sense? And I probably should have said this at the beginning of the video, but before you start shopping around for gear recommendations, gear ideas, what you're gonna invest in in your studio, you're probably gonna to wanna to take a step back and think about some of the long-term goals that you have with your studio. Think with the end in mind, I think it is. But yes, like if you plan on recording other people if you plan on recording bands and freelancing your services in the future, that might influence what type of audio interface you might get. You might need an audio interface with more inputs and outputs. Alternatively, if you don't plan on recording vocals, you might not need to invest in a nice microphone right away. You could maybe invest in a MIDI controller if you plan on using more software instruments. Or on the flip side, if you plan on doing mostly vocal recording and acoustic guitar recording, maybe you don't need a MIDI controller to start off. So all this to say is you might want to think about what are your musical strengths? Do you play any instruments? Or do you have any musical background? And if so, you might want to shape your gear choices and shape your priority of what you're going to invest in first based on your specific situation, your goals, and your specific skills. And hey, if you're just getting started with music production, you're green at this and you're feeling completely overwhelmed, or if you've been at this for a while and having trouble finishing projects, or hey, if you just wanna get a glimpse inside my personal workflow, I've created a super easy to follow seven step framework that helps you go from your very first ideas all the way to a finished master in seven easy to follow phases. It's super powerful. It's super handy to have around the studio as a printout, as a reference guide. So if you're interested in grabbing that, you can download that in the link below. And that wraps it up for this video. I hope it was useful to you. I hope it was valuable to you. And hey, let me know in the comments below, have you set up your home studio yet? What do you think is absolutely required in terms of gear to get started with music production? And what do you think is not required in a home studio? I'd love to know your opinion down below. So leave a comment, let's start a conversation. And until the next time, we'll see you in the next video.